Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I have a pretty large, very affordable perfume haul to share with you. So I'm super excited. This all came from Fragrance Net. Um, I usually keep like a cart running, and I usually, for some reason, like I'll get on, I'll get stuck on like one house, and then I'll order a whole bunch of stuff from like one house. Um, and I did that with Rocha. This time I ordered um, a few from Rocha, a couple from Nina Ricci, a couple more police fragrances that I wanted to try, um, a Paco Rabanne fragrance, as well as, yeah, well, that's it. Pretty much Rocha, Nina Ricci, and Paco Rabanne and police. So I'm going to jump right in. I've got a ton here. Um, the first one I picked up is this one. I haven't seen these before. Um, this is by Paco Rabanne, and this is called Fabulous Me. Um, now, this is like a whole line. This is described as being copper woody. Uh, this has like pumpkin and rhubarb, vanilla and sandalwood in it. This one was described as being like a gourmand. Uh, I liked this little insert that they had. I've never gotten like an insert like this um, in a perfume before. And it's like, a, I don't know, it's like a little poster thing. And then it's got all of the other fragrances in the collection on this paper, which I really, really liked. Yeah, I'm really interested in this one called Dangerous Me. It's described as vanilla ink. So yeah, I think I'm going to um, possibly pick that one up next. Yeah, because this one, it's a very interesting fragrance. Um, like I say, it's got pumpkin in it, rhubarb, and I think that this might be like one of the most unique perfume bottles that I have in my collection at this point. This is like, it feels like a puffy foam. It's very strange. It's like plastic and it's like a puffy foam bottle. Um, so yeah. Now, the scent is very, very sandalwood heavy. My favorite sandalwood fragrance that I have in my collection is uh, Samsara from Guerlain. And it's really the only sandalwood fragrance I feel like I need in my life. Um, so I'm never looking for like a sandalwood forward fragrance, but there's something really beautiful about this one. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was disappointed a little bit. I was hoping that the sandal would, would not be as prominent as it is, but there's something really beautiful about this. It's, you get that it's sandalwood, but there's a sharpness from the rhubarb and it's really, really beautiful. And then it starts to dry down. And when it starts to dry down, you really can smell the vanilla. The vanilla and the rhubarb really, really start taking over that sandalwood. And I'm hoping that this does on my skin what it's doing on the paper and what I've smelled, you know, from what I've smelled. The sandalwood really starts to take a back seat. You can still smell it. It's definitely still there. But the vanilla and the rhubarb really take over and it ends up smelling like this vanilla rhubarb custard. Like, oh my goodness, with a little bit of sandalwood in the background. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. And it's beautiful on paper. I just don't know if it's going to do that on my skin. So I'm really, really hoping it does. Um, I, of course, will keep you guys updated after I give this a full wear test. This is definitely more of a cold weather fragrance. This is not meant for this kind of weather. So um, we'll see. Maybe a hurricane will run through like they do every year and like really drop the temperature one day. And then I'll be able to test this in like maybe some cooler weather. Um, but until then, yeah, I will not be testing this in warm weather because I don't think it'll hold up. But so yeah, I am excited to have this one. I will keep you guys updated. It's a very interesting fragrance that is called Fabulous Me from Paco Rabanne. And I love how it came packaged too. It came, um, I'll show you guys. It came packaged like this in this foam, which I really, really like. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really digging this fragrance. I, it was a gamble. It was a blind buy. It was the most expensive fragrance that I got in here. This was like 43 or $47. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a little bit more of an expensive blind buy compared to what, what 
everything else I've got in this box, but it, I think it was a good one. So anyways, Fabulous Me from Paco Rabanne. Okay, I'm just going to move. These are in no order at all. Um, the next one I picked up, this is a Rochat fragrance, and this is called Mademoiselle Rochat Couture. This one has been uh, recommended to me from subscribers like a few times. I've definitely had this recommended a few times, and I'm glad I picked it up. It's a beautiful fragrance. I love the big grosgrain black bow on it. I think it's so pretty. It's very girly. Very feminine. I love the dark pink bottle. This reminds me of something. Oh my gosh. It's like a fruity floral, but it's... Oh my goodness. It reminds me of something that I've smelled before. Let me look it up real quick to see if I can find out what it is. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is like fruity, fruity tonka. It's like a, kind of like a fruity... Tonka. It smells like it's got vanilla. It says on Fragrance Cut that it smells like um, Good Girl from Carolina Herrera. And it does, but this smells so much better. I do, I do not like Good Girl at all. This smells so much better than Good Girl to me. This is fruitier. It's just beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's like a fruitier version of Good Girl. This has got pear in it. Ugh, I love this. I love it so much. This is one that can be worn any time of year too. Like I can definitely get away with wearing this in the heat because it's got such a beautiful fruity quality to it where I don't think good girl is a good choice for hot weather. So anyways, Mademoiselle Rocha Couture from uh, Rocha. I'm super excited about that one. Really beautiful scent. The next one I picked up, this is another Rocha. This one has been recommended to me, like, people have been recommending that I pick this up for a, a couple of years now, and I'm, I'm, I finally did it. But I was torn because I really wanted a vintage, I wanted to find a vintage bottle of it because I know that the new version, this new formulation, probably can't compare to the vintage formulation. So I think I'm still gonna look for a vintage bottle of it, but in the meantime, this formulation is gorgeous and I'm glad I picked it up even still. This is Tocad from Rocha, and I love this bottle. It's beautiful. Um, the last time somebody recommended this to me was in, um, my vanilla video, they were like, I can't believe you didn't talk about Tocad. And I'm like, well, I don't have Tocad, so I don't, I don't know. But this is a really beautiful vanilla fragrance. It's like an older style vanilla. It's in the vein of like Casimir from Chopard. It's beautiful though. It's a beautiful kind of a florally vanilla. It's gorgeous. I put this, I sprayed it on my hand immediately. These are my favorite types of perfumes. I love these kind of vintage smelling, but it's, but like classic enough to still be able to wear and get away with. They're not, it doesn't smell dated at all. It's like, I don't know. It's just beautiful. Um, yeah, I think there are probably some fruits in the top some flowers, vanilla, some woods. It's definitely got a vintage vibe going. This smelled really beautiful on my skin. I'm getting kind of a pee-pee smell on the paper, I'm not gonna lie, but I did not smell that on my skin at all. So if you get this or have it and you spray it on paper and you get that pee-pee smell at first, like, don't fear. I didn't get that on my skin at all, thank goodness. But this is just a beautiful, it probably has citrus in the top too. I'm getting some citrus, I think. It's beautiful, I love this. Super excited to finally have this in my collection. So that is Tocad from Rocha. I got a ton of Rocha, well, I got four Rocha fragrances in here. Okay, um, let's go to this one. The next one I picked up is another Rocha fragrance and this is Byzance. Um, this is, again, a reform. I have never smelled the original formulation, so I don't know what to compare it to. 
um, but this is beautiful. Even as a reformulation, it's gorgeous. I sprayed this on and wore it to bed last night because it's got that kind of bedtime vibe to it. Like it's definitely a beautiful bedtime fragrance and I was not disappointed. I could still smell this until I got in the shower this morning. It lasted forever. This is a cold weather type fragrance. I don't think that this would be a good, a good one for the heat. Um, Oh, it is beautiful. This is another one that reminds me of something. This is another kind of citrusy, warm vanilla fragrance. Um, people are comparing this to D Squared Want. I don't think it smells like D Squared Want at all. They're also comparing it to um, Dior Addict. I don't think it smells like Addict at all. It's got its own vibe. It smells like something that I've smelled before, but not any of those fragrances. It's really beautiful. It's like a powdery, like a very slightly powdery. I think it's got some heliotrope in it. Um, like a very slightly powdery floral with a little bit of citrus in the top, I think. Vanilla. It's beautiful. I love this. I think I I think this would be a safe like winter blind buy for people. It's so beautiful and like I say it wore beautifully on my skin. I loved it I wore it to bed and I was just in heaven. So Anyways, that is uh, Rocha Byzance gorgeous bottle, too Okay, next we have a Nina Ricci fragrance and this is called La Temptation de Nina um, this is a tester bottle. This is what I'm wearing today and this unfortunately lasted all of about 45 minutes on me. So this is, it's a really nice smelling fragrance. It's fruity floral. It's like a fruity floral. I love this hot pink apple bottle with the gold chunk. I love the gold leaves. Like I love everything about this bottle. I think it's so, so pretty. But yeah, the fragrance did not last on me at all. Really, really pretty bottle. But, and I wouldn't say this is a fail, like, the fragrance itself is very pretty. Um, and it's probably one of those fragrances that other people would still smell it on me, but I can't smell it at all anymore. Yeah, it's, I'm pretty sure this has pear in it. I think I'm getting pear right away. If not, it's definitely some kind of fruit, but I really do think it's pear. But it's just a fruity floral. Nothing groundbreaking, very safe, very generic smelling, but pretty nonetheless. So that is Nina Ricci, La Tentation de Nina. Um, I wouldn't run out and buy this though. It's not, I don't think it's worth it. Okay. Next we have another Nina Ricci fragrance. This is, I'm excited to try this one. This is called Le Gourmandi, Gourmandises, Gourmandi. Gourmandises, <laughs> De Nina. Um, yeah, this one has like, this one's so fun. This has got like sprinkles on top of the apple. You can see it's got these fun little sprinkles on top of the apple and it's an ombre apple it goes from like yellow to red it's so pretty really really beautiful bottle I'm really really hoping that this one works for me Ugh, I like this one better than the last one. Oh, this one is this one is like a sharp fruit like maybe apple, it could even be apple. But it's like a sharp fruit with a beautiful, almost like caramel, almost like a caramel note. Like a sharp fruit with maybe like caramel or praline and then maybe some vanilla to round it out. It's really, really beautiful. Again, nothing groundbreaking. It smells like candy. If you're into sweet fragrances, if you like gourmands, if you like candy-like fragrances, I think you would really like this. If you don't, stay away, stay far away because you would hate this. It's very, very, very sweet, very candy-like. 
very like carameled apple, but not like a heavy or a smooth or a creamy caramel, if that makes sense. More of just like the sweetness from the caramel. Ugh, but it's beautiful. I love it. I love the tanginess of this one. I love the sweetness of it. I love the sugared, the like the sugared candy quality of this. It smells like it maybe could even have like a touch of spice, like maybe a touch of cinnamon or something that just kind of, I don't know, balances it and makes it, uh, keeps it from going into that like sickly, nauseating territory. Maybe I'll spray this on. Ugh, it's pretty. I really like this one. So that is Le Gourmandises de Nina. <laughs> okay, next we have another Rocha fragrance and this is Mademoiselle Rocha and a lovely subscriber, somebody who subscribes to both of my channels actually recommended this to me. He said that he has been loving this and so I was like, well, that is going into my cart for my next order. This is Mademoiselle Rocha and I love this bottle. This is such a beautiful, clean, like, I don't know. It's just, whereas the Couture is like the beautiful dark pink and black ribbon, this one is like the innocent little sister with like the light pink bottle and the white ribbon. It's so pretty. Um, uh, this is a gorgeous, sweet, fresh rose. Yes beautiful sweet fresh rose something about this almost reminds me of my childhood it's very very fresh very slightly sweet very innocent smelling it's got a little bit of a green quality to it like very slight it's just enough to keep it smelling very fresh this is like a fresh rose and its stem with like a little bit of sweetness to it. It's so gorgeous. It's such a beautiful fresh rose fragrance and I don't have anything in my collection like it. Um, like amazingly with my 30 plus rose fragrances that I have, I don't have anything quite like this and it is so pretty. I love it. So that is Mademoiselle Rocha. Okay, next we've got some police fragrances. I'm really excited about both of these. One of them is a dupe for something and I'm super excited about these. This first one is called Passion and I stayed away from these because I I really am attracted to the police fragrances in the skull bottles for some reason. And so I didn't think to pick these up because, I don't know, these bottles, they're a nice heavy glass. They're really pretty. They're very simplistic, heavy glass, but they just didn't attract me the way that the skull bottles did. But these are really, really nice. This is, and they've got a really nice sprayer. Well, you're not going to be able to see, but it's got a very, very nice sprayer on it. This one is beautiful. This one teeters on being shampoo-y. It's gorgeous. It's slightly sweet, floral, but not too floral. It's like a slightly sweet, it's got almost a little bit of a tropical vibe going, but it's got like the crispness of maybe a cucumber. Um, it smells like there's a cucumber note in this. It's gorgeous. This is so pretty. I have a feeling this is going to be a fleeting fragrance, though. This is a big bottle. I think it's a, let's see. Yeah, this is a 3.4 ounce bottle, so I'm not upset that it. I'll probably have to reapply it 10 times in a day, but... It's very, very pretty, and it was very, very inexpensive. So this was a really beautiful, very inexpensive blind buy, and I love it. It's got a beautiful big hibiscus flower on the front. It's really, really pretty. Very, very nice. Really far surpassed my expectations. And the next one is a little hidden gem, you guys. This is called Police Dark, and I can tell you pretty confidently that this is an absolute dupe for Michael Kors' Midnight Shimmer. Um, this is a beautiful, sweet vanilla fragrance. Yeah, this smells almost exactly like, yeah, almost exactly like Michael Kors Midnight Shimmer, but this is better. This is way better. This is a little bit more complex than Midnight Shimmer. 
but it's still that beautiful, sweet, almost Play-Doh-y smelling vanilla. But this has got so much more going on in it than the Midnight Shimmer. I just, there's something about this one that I just love. Whereas I'm really, I'm kind of on the fence about Midnight Shimmer. I'll probably use it as like a layering fragrance. This one I'll totally wear by itself because it's a little bit more complex. It's still a beautiful, sweet, yummy vanilla, but there's just more going on in this than in Midnight Shimmer. I love this. It's gorgeous. If you guys like vanilla, I think if you like sweet, kind of simple, it's definitely not, um, you know, it's definitely not a complex vanilla or anything. It's just a little bit, it's got a little bit more of something going on than the Michael Kors, but it's still just a pretty simple, sweet, um, really inexpensive vanilla. I love it. I'm in love with this. This is a little hidden gem. Um, yeah, I think I paid 14, 16 something dollars for it. Really inexpensive. So anyways, that is Police Dark. And then last but not least, we've got our little red bag of goodies. So I will start with the little bottles that I got. I picked up a little quarter ounce bottle of Fancy from Jessica Simpson. Um, yeah, I, just, I didn't have this in my collection at the moment and I was like, I want it back. I don't need a full bottle of it though because I don't use it that often. And yeah, I wanted it and I love this little mini. I thought it was so adorable. Like the cutest little mini. And it was a sprayer and it was like, I think $2. I love it. It's beautiful. I love Jessica Simpson Fancy. But it goes in and out of my collection. Um, and I had to have it back in my collection because it really is. I don't wear this one often because it doesn't last very long on, on me. Um, but I do love it. And I miss it when I don't have it. So yeah, I was thrilled to find this little this little mini. It's so pretty. It's a beautiful amber vanilla fragrance. I love it. It's not unlike, um, I don't know, it's not unlike the Byzance or the Fabulous Me. It's kind of in that same family of fragrances, which is like my favorite family of fragrances. Uh, so anyways, that's a little quarter ounce bottle of Jessica Simpson Fancy with a little sprayer. It's so cute. Okay, this is another one that I found for like $3 or something. This is the Kim Kardashian Gold Fragrance. Um, I picked it up because I've never tried any of the Kim Kardashian fragrances in these bottles. And again, a little perfect quarter ounce that I could try out. Um, this has got a really nice little sprayer on it. This reminds me of some other celebrity scent. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it reminds me of something like exactly like something. Um, I don't love this. This is not my favorite. This is just kind of one of those generic dark, kind of like one of those generic dark pencil shaving plummy perfumes, if that makes any sense. It's got a lot of that pencil shaving note going on though, and I really, really don't like that synthetic cedar that causes that pencil shaving note. I don't, I'm not crazy about this. I am glad to have it in the little tiny bottle though. This mini is so cute, and I just love collecting these little minis, so I'm perfectly happy to have it. It was like three bucks. I, you know, I'm definitely not upset about it, but it's not one I'll wear. Because like I say, very generic, pencil shaving, kind of dark, plummy fragrance. I've smelled it a hundred times, so. Okay, and then I got two samples. I picked up this one. This is the Hene Mori um, fragrance, and this is just, this is for men. This is a men's fragrance. Uh, and it's the one that comes in the bottle that looks like that. Yeah, it's like a frosted glass bottle. And I read that this is supposed to be like a gourmand, um, but I sprayed it last night and it doesn't smell like a gourmand to me at all. It's very, very citrusy and woody. It's like a very typical citrusy, woody men's fragrance. And I really didn't get gourmand at all. Um, yeah, and it even says on the card, citrus woodsy. 
yeah, I'm not getting any kind of gourmand at all. So I don't know. But I think I looked this one up on Fragrantica and people were saying that it was like a beautiful gourmand. It's not. It's very, very... It's like, it's a really beautiful men's cologne. Don't get me wrong. I would love to smell this on a man. I wouldn't wear it. It's way too masculine for me. But like I say, I would love to smell this on a man. This is a beautiful, clean, very, very clean, citrusy, woody fragrance. So anyways, that is Hene Mori for men. Just the original Hene Mori. Um, and then last but not least, I picked up this Ajmal fragrance. This is called Ajmal Shine. This is an eau de parfum. And uh, I, a lot, some of these Middle Eastern fragrances that are like fruity, floral, and that's what this one is called. It, or This is referred to as being a fruity, floral, powdery, woody fragrance. Um, some, some of these fruity, floral, sweet Middle Eastern fragrances can be way, way too much for me. Uh, so I love being able to sample them first. This one is really, really pretty. It's not, um, I wouldn't say that it's like too much for me, but it still it has that very, very sickeningly sweet fruit note in the top. This is one that I would have to test on my skin to see, to go through the journey with it, to see if it transformed into something less fruity, less sweet and fruity. It's almost got like a, if you guys have ever had like fruit incense sticks, like a mango incense stick or like a watermelon incense stick. Okay, so my camera cut off. It's, it's been a couple hours at this point. Um, this is still sitting here. This is the Ajmal Shine that we were just talking about. Um, yeah, this is supremely fruity. After it's it's like really really dried down on the paper, it is still incredibly strong. Very very sweet, very fruity. Definitely not anything that I could or would want to wear. It's just it's one of those headache inducing like crazy strong fragrances. But um, people that can handle this or like these types of fragrances, I think would really like this one. It's just like a fruity kind of floral strong Middle Eastern style fragrance. So that is Ajmal Shine. And that's going to be it guys. Those are all of the fragrances that I picked up uh, recently or that is my most recent fragrance net haul. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.